Hobby Health Day and I'm going to do this as a one take because I don't really have time to be talking to you right now. Um, I kind of got caught up in some other stuff. I am uh, a finalist for the Geek Insider Vlogger Contest. Uh, you can check this video out here. It is uh, ending um, next Friday so you can vote every day if you can. Um, I'm the only one there who's vlogging about miniature wargaming so uh, if you want to support like sharing this hobby with more geeks that's Please, please vote for me. Anyways, um, hobby health. Let's go on to the, like, the most multi-use tool that I have encountered so far in my modeling and uh, model painting career, and that is this stuff right here. Uh, this is not uh, gum. This is like blue tack. I get. I, I was called blue tack even though it's orange. But this is the Elmer's brand stuff. Uh, Elmer's tack. Um, this you also see as like hold it or whatever or you find it in the same aisle they sell like Justin Bieber posters in your Walmart or whatever um, the glue aisle the tape aisle it's meant for like hanging posters on walls without peeling the paint off the walls um, so it's really low tack but it is tacky and it holds it's always moist you can reuse it uh, for the most part and it is fantastic I have used it for so many things um, right now I'm building a riptide for the Out of the Basement tournament. It came from Out of the Basement 2013, um, which is like three days from today. I've been building this riptide for like the last week and getting caught up with all the other stuff. I've been crazy busy and I've, I've still got to get a whole bunch of stuff put together, but I used this stuff so much in building that model. It was crazy. I used it all for all the dry fitting, for example. So, here's the model. Um, I posed him kneeling. And in posing and kneeling, I had to figure out the angle in which I wanted to put this leg at um, so that this knee would be able to touch the ground, which angle this knee had to be so it would touch the ground. Um, I still had to do some shaving, but it was nearly not as bad as like if I had not done any dry fitting whatsoever. And I used all this stuff to hold all the joints together as I sat them up on the base to figure out just what it would kind of look like. So fantastic for dry fitting, obviously. Um, so I just built all the components separately and built him as if he were like a sprue crisis kit because um, all these pieces are like two sandwich halves that like seam together and they have a, the seam line down the middle you have to clean off all the pieces but um, yeah that's that's what I did to build him in the kneeling position. He will be done soon I hope. Um, so that's that. I did all the dry fitting with this stuff. What I also did was I primed him. Um, I, did a, I do a lot of priming uh, using masking tape. I am masking tape down my pieces so they don't like roll. I'm really clumsy. I'm actually, I'm, I'm extremely clumsy and I have a tendency to drop models, especially on like a priming tray or whatever. So I usually just tape them down. <laughs> um, I'll lay down like some, some masking tape and stick that tape down onto whatever surface I'm going to be priming on and then put the pieces on top of that. So for flatter things like fusion blasters and even like ion cannons and that sort of thing, I I like laid them flat and it was fine, but for like three-dimensional stuff like like the top half of the riptide or even the riptide's legs, like I primed them this way, but then you have to get his crotch in the underside. And like this is not particularly stable or easy to prime against. Um, so I just stuck I stuck them on another piece and I basically put them on a base and I put them way back on the base. I stick them upside down. I primed them like this. And it's nice because you can get like all the angles at it. Ooh! And do the same this way. The bottom half. Ba -na -na. It looks very Lara Crofty. Um, but but yeah, that's that's what I did to prime him, his upper body and his lower body, which aren't flat pieces. A three-dimensional, have a lot of sticky out parts. Um, so I used the we tack on a base to just get the primer on them. Um, and Though I should say that once you kind of prime with this stuff, you have to chuck it. It's no longer sticky. But on the upside, it doesn't pull primer off your model. Um, and, uh, and it's so cheap. Like, I think I spent like a buck, buck fifty for the pack that I have right now. And it is a lot. and It's gone a long way. Um, so, yeah, that's the model there. Uh, the other thing I've seen this stuff used for. So, so far we have dry fitting. We have uh, priming, um, painting. Uh, Mathieu Lafontaine, who is like an amazing painter, um, he usually sticks his like models on dowels. Like this plastic piece here is really crappy and thin, and it sucks to hold a model like this. You used to be able to stick them using this stuff onto like the flat top of a Games Workshop pot, paint a pot, but you know, here. This is kind of round now, not really conducive for like 
um, for sticking a model on top. It's just very, very not round. Um, it's very round. So, so I was thinking, what do I have around the house? I don't have a bunch of dowels like Matthew has, um, but I do have this. It's a wine o'clock wine bottle, because um, it's always wine o'clock. But uh, there we are. Look at that. You can hold them upside down. You can move them. And this right here, it's ni it fits nice and comfortable in your hand. Um, the other thing about the glass bottle is that you stick it on the table. It's about eye level, um, depending on how tall you are. But it's about eye level, and if you hit this model with a brush, it's not going to like tip over or fall or anything. It's like it's quite steady because of the weight on it. And if you don't drink a uh, classy wine with a screw top lid, that's okay too. Um, not only is it wine o'clock in this house, it's vodka o'clock. And again, fits beautifully. Um, I like Hanger 1. I also like Grey Goose. It's kind of nice height. I've got the neck so you can hold the model. Um, but whatever alcohol you choose to stick your model on is totally your prerogative. So that's three uses for this dry tap. Um, and, and that's not all. So let's say you have a tournament to go to on the weekend. And let's say that you really wanted to have this model built a while ago and you were intending to, say, magnetize his weapons on, his uh, main weapons on, as well as secondary weapons, but you're just running out of time because it is not painted yet and you have like two days before you've got to get it done. So, and I'm sorry for the guys who have to like play me doing this, but um, you'll never know, I promise you won't see it. Riptide arm, Riptide gun, Ghetto magnet. There. <laughs> if you have uh, a lip on your weapon options and you want to just stick some stuff on right away, you, um, I'm not going to say you can't keep doing this forever, but like I'm eventually going to make this. Uh, on it'll be a lot more sturdy, but this is really light. It's light enough to hold and that arm that gun is not moving So um, yeah, this is my ghetto magnet, which I will be using at, uh, at Out of the basement this weekend. So there you go. If you see me at out of the basement, please say hi Tell me you watch my videos um, I really appreciate it uh, and uh, and yeah, hopefully I see some of you there. If you like this content, like this video, uh, go down, like the video, subscribe to my channel. And, uh, and if you feel really generous, uh, you'll go again, check out this video here and vote for me on geekandsundry.com slash vlogs. Anyways, see you soon.